Hey guys, Ray here. Welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today I am installing my personal EV car charger. It's off-grid, battery powered. So I'm thinking about getting an electric vehicle and I don't want my power bills to go up. So this system is designed primarily for off-grid cabins or supplement your house in case of emergency. But we're gonna run the numbers and this is actually a perfect kit for an EV car charger. If you're worried about gas not being available or electricity not being available to help you get around. So this system could be perfect for you. Or perhaps you installed solar panels on your house and you got rid of your electric bill, but now you got an electric vehicle and now you've got your power bill again. This system should offset your power bill. So let's jump right into it. If you wanna have some fun, come along. So I was speaking with my grandma the other day and asking her about the war. She says one thing that she does remember even though our infrastructure in the United States wasn't really attacked, they still had to ration their gasoline. But one thing that electric vehicles do that's really nice is it makes you so you can be totally energy independent regarding your vehicle and getting around. It's not like I can drill a hole in my backyard and start getting uh, gasoline. But here I can just throw some panels in my backyard, install a battery and an inverter, and I've got my own personal power station here. I can power up my vehicle and I can still get around. So even if you don't like electric vehicles, you know that you gotta admit that's pretty nice. Okay, let's look at why I chose this specific battery and power system as my off-grid EV charger. Okay, so before I get into the build of the system and show it charging a vehicle, first I wanted to go through some of the numbers, like how many solar panels I'm gonna need to charge, how many miles I'm gonna be able to charge every single night. So everyone's situation is going to be different but hopefully you can use these equations, plug in your specific scenario, like the type of vehicle you're gonna have, and that'll help you out in choosing what type, of, what type of battery and car charger you're gonna need. But I'll divide this video into chapters, so feel free to skip this section if you wanna go straight to the build. In my vehicle, I plan on driving about 12,000 miles per year. I think that's right about average, but that comes out to be about 32 miles per day. So when I charge, I wanna make sure I'm at least 32 miles per day, more than that, preferably, because I'm gonna have it, if I go on a long road trip and my battery is low, when I plug into charge, I want it to eventually get it back up to the top and let me go, go on a long road trip again. I don't wanna to have to plug into the grid power. So that's, that's the goal here. I wanna always have my battery near the peak. And if I'm low, I can be able to build back up to the peak again. Now, obviously it'd be best if I could just go from empty and top it off at night with one single battery, but that is going to take up a lot of space in my garage, all those batteries. And as that system would cost me like $35,000, mostly in battery cost. Now this system right here, it starts at around $7,000 and that includes the solar panels I'm going to need. But it also allows me to expand more batteries if I end up wanting more batteries in the future. I can add some more. Let's go ahead and look at how many miles I can get per charge from this battery. So the electric vehicle I'm thinking about purchasing will have a 100 kilowatt hour battery and I'm gonna buy a used vehicle and looking online, they say I can get realistically just over 300 miles per charge. So I'm just gonna round that down to 300 miles per charge. So 300 divided by 100 kilowatt hour battery. So I get three miles per kilowatt hour. So this battery is right around 15 kilowatt hours. 15 kilowatt hours times three miles give me about 45 miles per charge. In theory, this is a very efficient inverter. Obviously I'm gonna have some cloudy days in there and I won't be able to charge from the system. But remember the battery I have in my car is gonna be 100 kilowatt hours. So at 32 miles a day, that's roughly 10 days of driving. So I should be able to survive some cloudy days and sunny days, maybe I can catch back up. Now this specific system, you can add more batteries if needed, but I'm just gonna go with one for now. If I, if I find I'm always having to switch over to the grid, I could add another one. I'm just gonna add, keep everything at a minimum cost for now. So and those numbers are only if I'm charging at night. So if I'm working from home and I can plug in when the sun's out, depending on how many solar panels I have, I could get a lot more of a charge. Let's look at the solar panels that I, that I currently have. So right now I have three, 10 
325 watt solar panels. They're all in strings, positive to negative, positive to negative, and they plug in nicely into this unit. So with 10 of those panels, I have 3.25 kilowatt hours. Now, I think I have a good seven hours of good sun here in Utah. At 3.25 kilowatts times seven hours, that gives me right around 22 kilowatt hours of power coming per day into this system. Now, solar panels never produce 100%. Usually it's about uh, 0.7 uh, of what they're rated. So if I times that number by 0.7, that's just enough to charge this per day. Now that doesn't account for the winters where it's gonna be a little bit shorter daylight hours. So, so ideally I should get at least 10 400 watt solar panels. That would really be ideal. So this inverter can output 6,000 watts, 15 kilowatt hours divided by 6,000 watts. I should be able to discharge this battery in two and a half hours. And that should get me 18 miles per hour of charging out of the setup. Those are just kind of some rough numbers and calculations for you. But, and obviously in your electric vehicle, depending on what type of battery you have, you may not want to have it, your battery topped off all the way. So you'll want to take that into account as well. All right, let's go ahead and wire this up. This really should be really easy. Now, feel free to hire an electrician. It's not going to cost that much because there's really not that many wires to connect here. But let's go ahead and do it. Now, really the hardest part was connecting this battery. This battery weighs 282 pounds, I believe. So it comes with this bracket that I can mount to the stud on my wall. And then I need to uh, get the battery over there and onto that bracket. Now it was kind of tricky to get it onto the bracket. There was no way I was lifting that up. My wife came and helped me and we still couldn't lift it up. So I ended up getting a piece of wood under there and I could lift up the wood and it would slide onto the bracket. All right, this is the next day. There are some set screws that can mount the bracket to the battery permanently. And then uh, also I can, it comes with this box, the whole kit. And this is kind of the wire run to hide all of your wire connections. Pretty nice. It, it also has this door that comes with the lock so I can lock everything. And then the inverter just sits right on top of there. There are some nice little holes that line up and I can put these grommets in here to protect the wires and also help to hold the inverter in place. It also came with these black grommets. Okay, here are the battery cables that come with the unit. These are two aught cables. One end has a quick disconnect, but Signature Solar includes a video on how to crimp these and the ring terminals that you can use for this. Now, this is a crimper that I bought. This was fairly affordable. I think it was only like $20, and it provides a variety of crimping sizes that you can use. I think it was like $20. I'll include a link to that in the description. So I was able to crimp it two times. And then I have this shrink wrap that came with my ring terminals. And I'm just going to heat this up. I don't have a heat gun here. So I'm just using my oven, but I'm staying far enough away that it's not gonna melt my uh, insulation on my cables there. Okay, here's where I'm gonna connect my battery terminals. Now these just pop off and then you can easily clip these on. And here's my negative and my positive. And you see there's multiple ports there. If you wanna have more than one battery connected together. All right, now here's the communication cable. One end goes into the inverter and the other end goes into the battery. So you have better communication. The battery has a, a battery management system that can send data into the inverter, like the charge state. If it needs to charge slower or faster, just added extra safety. And then you can also see the battery percentage uh, in the inverter and see the state of charge. And here are the battery terminals. They will be fastened down with the provided nut and there are torque specifications in the manual. Okay, so I have this connected. I just turned it on right here turn the breaker on and the battery on and it just turned on it's working great i can see the battery percentage here 
Check this out, I can also see like a general percentage of what it's charged with these lights right here. Looks like we're at 67%. It's pretty awesome. So I just plugged in my solar panels here really quick to charge this battery off. This is very temporary. But my brother-in-law is coming over with his Tesla Model Y and we are gonna run this through the test. We're gonna hook our charger up here. I gotta finish this by tomorrow and uh, then we can see how much uh, charge we can put into his car. This is my uh, solar array that I have set up here temporarily. It's just sitting on the ground, you know? Pretty good, pretty easy. I'm not sure what sort of racking system I'm gonna get here, but this is a great idea if you have a flower bed that you are sick of weeding. So I'm just gonna let this charge for a little bit. I'm gonna go to my uh, daughter's dance recital and come back, see what kind of uh, charge we have. Okay, so it is fully charged. I just turned everything off, this off, the breakers off, everything off. Now we can hook up this last set of wires for the outlet here. Now there's a L1 hot, L2 hot, a ground, and a neutral. Here I'm hooking up the neutral and the ground at the bottom there. Here I'm gonna go ahead and hook up L1 and L2 for black. I'm gonna use black for L1 and red for L2. Now I'm gonna move the wires back and forth and it lets the stranded wires kind of seat a little bit better and then it can tighten them down a little more. Now this grounding wire was connected to the door and I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it the rest of the way to this other provided nut and bolt here. Now I can connect the faceplate to my NEMA 1450 outlet. This is a pretty standard outlet that's used for ovens or dryers. This is what the car charger is going to plug into. Okay, so here it is. It's really easy to set up. So this isn't even connected to my house grid at all. It's totally independent. Solar comes in here, charges the battery. When I plug my car into that, the power from the battery goes into the car battery. Yeah, but if you have any questions on setting this up yourself, I literally just connected everything and it worked. I did need to change setting 26 to enable the ground neutral bond because it's not connected to my house grid, but everything else, it just works. You just plug it in and it's really easy. But if you, there's a lot of different settings you can configure in this if you want. And in Current Connected or Signature Solar, they have a support team. You can call them and ask them any questions. All right, let's jump in the car and look at the battery. Okay, battery's at 50%. And it shows there's 150 miles left until empty. So let's see how many miles we can add to this. Okay, charging at this location, I'm just going to go down to 20 amps. Good. Okay, I've never done this before. Sweet. Power. Oh yeah. This is calibrating here. 17 miles an hour, pretty close to the original calculation. That's how fast we're charging. Interesting here. 20 amps. Well, it's only going to 80% capacity. Let's turn this up to the 25 amps. So 
You see the charger re is recalibrating a little bit. So it took me five hours, four hours and five minutes to get 100% charged. So now we're running at pretty much 100% the capacity of this unit. So we're just gonna let this run for two hours as a general test for this unit, see if it can run 100% for two hours. It looks like it totally turned off. We used all the battery up. See how much power we have in the car. Okay, it looks like there is 202 miles now until empty. So that looks like we added 43 miles. Battery's now at 64%. So I forgot to mention, it comes with a Wi-Fi dongle, so you can monitor everything from your app and also make any changes from your phone. So let's talk a little bit about price. So I'm gonna have someone come over and give me a quote on installing a power wall, which is similar to this setup. And I'm pretty sure that quote is gonna come in about $20,000. This full setup is right around $5,000. And it's not gonna take an electrician very much labor to, uh, to install this as well. Yeah, so it has your battery breaker, your, your AC breaker, all these other breakers, your solar disconnect. If you want to connect grid here, in case it's really cloudy out there, or if you want to have, you, have it use all your battery and then start charging from the grid, you can hook grid up. You can hook a generator up here and it'll automatically turn on a generator if that's enabled. This thing's been out about a year. Now, some of the older units, they had a really loud fan. This one's a little more quiet, but you can hear it still. So I wouldn't put this inside your house. I, it's definitely more for like the garage or, or mechanical room with a door that can shut. But these systems are getting pretty cool. So another thing, I could power this uh, little mini electrical panel and put a whole bunch, of, put a few circuit breakers in for some critical loads on my house if I'd like. You could have an electrician come over and maybe add an extra outlet from here and then you could run extension cords from your fridge in case the power goes out and have like a little backup power system. I was able to wire up a cord on my furnace so I could run an extension cord from my furnace and plug my furnace, my gas furnace in here to keep me warm during the winter. So I'll put links and discount codes in the description if this is something you're wanting to purchase. But thanks a lot for watching. Check out my other videos. Talk to you later.